This is Al Brooks, and this is my Price Action Trading Course. This module is about trading major trend reversal bottoms. A lower low major trend reversal, in other words a bottom, you need a bear trend, and then you need a break above the bear trend line, in other words a break out of the bear channel. Preferably you'd want the, the rally to be strong enough to reach the moving average, but that's not necessary. After that, you need one more sell-off. You want a test of the bear low. Since we're talking about a lower low major trend reversal, here I'm looking for a test of the prior low that uh, goes below the prior low. And then finally, I want to see a buy signal bar, preferably a bull reversal bar. So the context is a bear trend, a rally above the uh, trend, uh, bear trend line, and then a sell-off, preferably weaker than the sell-off in the original trend, and then a reversal up, including a strong buy signal bar in the area of the prior low. I'm going to use uh, the spider chart, the SPY, the ETF, following the S&P 500 stock index, and I'll use a five-minute chart. Here, we're forming lower highs and lower lows, so we're in a bear trend and we're accelerating downward at this point. This is the first bar of today. This is the last bar of yesterday. And the first bar of today, we broke below the bottom of a bear channel. Usually bear breakouts of bear channels fail. So traders are looking for a reversal up. But um, we have some problems here. Look at the signal bar. A small body, the tail on top is bigger than the body. So that's a weak signal bar. Also, it's following a very tight bear channel with very strong um, selling pressure. Also, there's no prior significant buying pressure in this bear channel. And we have one little bull body here. We have this one bull body here, but not enough to break above the top of the um, bear channel and not enough to hit the moving average. So this is not a strong buy setup. I would wait. Now look what happened. Uh, the market reversed back up into the channel and it poked out of the top of the channel. Poking out of the top of the channel, the top of the channel is the trend line, so the market's breaking above the top of the trend line and we're getting close to the moving average. So this is good buying pressure. The last bar of yesterday, first four bars of today, that's five consecutive bull trend bars and two of them are relatively big bars, big bodies with closes near their highs. So that is um, good buying pressure. Um, it's only four bars up. You, in general, I'd like to see closer to 10 bars in the rally. But in the open of the day, first hour of the day, a lot of times major trend reversals happen with fewer bars and bigger bars. So here we have four bars, and one of them is very big. However, um, we're breaking above the bull trend line, and we have good buying pressure here. So that's alerting traders to the possibility that any sell-off could result in a major trend reversal. Now there's always a bear case um, as well as a bull case. The bear case is we pushed up on the last bar of yesterday, we sold off, and now we're pushing up again. So the bears see this as a double top bear flag near the moving average. So aggressive bears might short below the low of this bull bar. I would never do that. You know, with four consecutive bars up, I think this could be a trend from the open bull even though the context is not quite right for a, um, for a strong buy. I'd like to see what a test down looks like. At this point, with this much buying pressure, I think the odds are there will be buyers below and the market might form a higher low. But the bears will fight to get a double top bear trend, a double top bear flag, a move below this low, and then a measured move down here. So I'm, to me, I'm going to wait to see if we get a higher low, maybe a lower low, major trend reversal, rather than take the short. And this is what we have, a very large bear outside down reversal bar, a big gap between the close of the bar and the low of the prior bar. So a pretty strong bear move. And this is enough to erase the buying pressure that we had with this big bull bar. So we have big up and big down. This is a two-bar reversal. It does not matter that the two bars are not adjacent. It does not matter that there are bars in between. Uh, this is effectively a two-bar reversal. 
uh, and it's a reversal down, so we probably are going to go uh, lower. Uh, most traders don't like to reverse, so either they took the short as the market went outside down, looking for the downside breakout, or, um, and then they'll, they'll ignore the long, or they'll not take the short and wait to see if we get a buy setup. <clears throat> okay, since we have a double top and a bear trend, even with the four bull bars, aggressive bears could short one tick below the low of the prior bar as the bar is going outside down. It's certainly a reasonable swing short going for a reward equal to twice the risk. The stop would either be above the high of this bull bar or above the high of the bear bar. However, given that we broke above the trend line and we hit the moving average, um, we may end up getting a major trend reversal down here, so the bears would have to be quick, pretty quick to get out of shorts if we start to reverse up. All right, so what do you do at this point? All right, we have a reversal bar, a close above the midpoint, and a close above the open. It's a small bull body, and on the day, it's a high two. Uh, we had a high one here and a second uh, reversal up here. Possible evolution into a trading range. Possible lower low major trend reversal. We broke above the trend line. We hit the moving average, and now we're selling off, and we're reversing up at a new low on the day. So only three bars down on the test of the bear low. Again, in general, you'd like to see five or ten bars up, that breaking the moving average. You'd like to see five or ten bars down uh, testing the bear low. But on the open, things can happen faster, and you can get far fewer bars, uh, but the bars tend to be very big, as they are here. So to me, this is a swing buy, um, not high probability, uh, so maybe 40%. Um, so if you're taking a 40% buy, you have to be using a uh, profit target that's at least twice as big as your risk. Your initial risk is below the signal bar. Your entry is here. So you take a measured move up, uh, and your target would be somewhere up in this area. If you're short, I definitely would get out of any short at this point because this is a reasonable major trend reversal buy signal. If you're flat, you could buy here, or you could wait for... Uh, further evidence that the market has become always in long. At this point, I think the market's still always in short, even though it's on a valid major trend reversal buy signal. Now, look what we have um, after our entry bar. We have another bull bar, so that's good for the bulls. We might be forming lower highs and lower lows, and we may be channeling down, but at this point, we're getting far too many bull bodies and big bull bodies for me to look too short. So I personally would not look to short. And at this point, I think the market's probably always in long. We have a good entry bar and a good follow-through bar. So at this point, I think if you did not buy above the high of that bar, uh, it's okay to buy the close of this bar and maybe put a stop below the bottom of the two-bar bull spike. You could also keep a stop below the bottom of the, uh, of the day, the low of the day. For the bears, they might short below this bar thinking that it's another lower high in a bear channel and that it's simply a pullback from this strong bear breakout to a new low of the day. Uh, I personally would not take the short because we're getting far too many bull bodies, far too much buying pressure. This is a very good bar for the bulls, a very big bull trend bar, closing well above the high of the prior bar and above the high of the bear spike and above the uh, highs of the past uh, 15 or 20 bars. So that's a very strong bull reversal bar and probably will have uh, follow through buying. At the moment, I would look for a measured move up based on the height of this first leg. Um, since it's always in long and it's, a, it, it's the breakout phase of a bull trend, the probability is 60% that you'll get a measured move up. Um, the initial risk is uh, down to below the bottom of the spike. So if you uh, bought this close, your profit target probably would be lower, maybe around here, and you could already exit with a reward equal to your risk. If instead you view this as a breakout above um, this uh, weaker leg up, uh, you'd try to get a measured move up here. Also, we have a magnet up here, a prior lower high, and this target is below that magnet, so it's probably worth trying to get um, out at uh, that point. 
It's possible that this is simply part of a buy vacuum test of the top of a trading range, but if it is, we probably have a little bit more to go because there's room up to that prior lower high. <clears throat> so we have uh, a trend line break, a lower low major trend reversal, always in long, probably on the close of this bar, certainly by the close of this bar, and now we have a pause bar. We have six bars up without a pullback. I think there will be buyers below the low of this bar with either a stop below this low or better, a stop all the way below the bottom of the bull spike. And there may be buyers above the high of this bar as well because we have room up to that lower high. <coughs> so it may be a one bar final flag and the start of a bigger correction and a transition into a trading range. In any case, if you bought this close or above this bar or above this bar, um, I would be holding long and trying to get uh, a measured move up based on the height of this first uh, spike up. And the market went slightly above a measured move based on the height of the low of the signal bar to the high of this first leg up and then had a strong bear bar, a pause, and then a second strong bear bar. We're in breakout mode here. We have three consecutive inside bars, one, two, three and arguably a high two buy. We went down and then up and then down and uh, technically this is a buy signal. Uh, to me I would be concerned that we're getting pretty close to the top of the trading range and we have a very strong bear reversal bar plus we have another uh, bear reversal bar. So I would uh, make sure that I took, out, took off at least half of my profits either up here at the measured move target or on these uh, strong bear closes. Um, and um, you, could, you could short also, or get, you, not short, you could exit also below the lows of uh, those bear bars. Protective stop at this point, you could have it below the cent, uh, signal bar or below the entry bar. Um, I would not put it below the low of this bull bar because it's possible that we just channel down and the bottom of that bar will be a magnet. Everyone knows there are stops below it. So I would not put a stop there. I would either put a stop below the entry bar or below the signal bar. Or I would get out of part or all right here. Um, I think it's okay to get out of all and maybe look to buy a higher low major trend reversal. Remember, after you have a lower low major trend reversal, you usually end up getting a higher low major trend reversal. We have a strong bear breakout, but look at the follow through. The follow-through bar is a doji bar and not another strong bear bar. So this may be a failed bear breakout and it might simply be a test of the breakout above the high of this bar. Remember this is a breakout and it's a gap. Um, the gap is between the high of this bar and the lows of these bars and this bear bar is testing the bottom of that gap. So this could simply be a sell vacuum test of support, the bottom of a gap. And you could also argue that it's a higher low major trend reversal after the lower low major trend reversal. However, this is not a strong buy signal bar. It's certainly not strong enough to reverse the effect of this strong bear bar. So I personally would not buy above this bar. I would wait to buy. Uh, so had I gotten out of all of my uh, long position up in here somewhere, uh, I would be currently flat waiting for more information. If the bottom of the uh, bull spike fails, you uh, exit, um, you know, maybe around break even, or if the bear clearly resumes. If you do exit, you have to be ready to buy again. If you're still long part of your position, uh, you'd look to buy more on a higher low major trend reversal, especially if there's a good signal bar. Sometimes you have to have several attempts before the trend resumes. So sometimes the first setup does not work. All right, so look what happened. The market had one more push down. Very often when you have a strong breakout, you have a second push down, and that's what we have here. But now we have a very strong bull reversal bar, and arguably three pushes down into a wedge bull flag. One push down, second push down, third push down, and a strong bull reversal bar. The context is good, a potential higher low major trend reversal. The market never flipped to always in short on these bear bars. They were immediately followed by pauses or strong reversals. 
and we're now forming a higher low. You can see how it dipped right below the bottom of the um, big bull breakout bar. A lot of times it does that to run stops, break even stops on weak longs. And now we have a strong bull reversal bar. So I'd place a buy stop above its high to get long or to add to my long. Uh, I was not filled on this bar, but I would have been filled on this bar. And the new stop is below the low of that strong signal bar. Uh, first target would be the top of this channel down. Next target would be a new high of the day. And possibly a leg one equals leg two measured move up. Leg one, the bull spike and then a pullback, and then leg two would be a second leg up about the same length as the first leg up. And this is what we got. Uh, we got a bull bar, bear bar, bull bar, bear bar, bull bear, bull bear, right? That is not a strong bull trend. So when you see that, it's probably a bull leg and a trading range. So instead of this being a strong bull trend at this point, I'm assuming that the market is in a trading range. And in a trading range, I want to buy low, sell high, and scalp. I bought low, and now the market's high, so I'm thinking about selling. I'm not willing to sell to go short, but I am willing to sell to get out of longs. We have a micro double top, a small flag that failed, and uh, to me, I would get out of longs uh, probably below that bear bar, and I would have been filled over here. As far as buying this as a high two or a high three, um, I would not buy it. I think. This looks like a bull leg in a trading range. It's not strong. It's not consecutive big bear, uh, bull trend bars. It's alternating bull and bear bars with pullbacks along the way and small bodies, and we're stalling out around the prior high. So for me, um, I would get out of longs. It's not strong enough for me to short, but I would get out of longs and look to buy again lower. Maybe we'll form a large triangle. You could stay long and... Uh, with a stop below this higher low. You would not want the market to come down below that higher low because uh, most traders got long probably right around here. This fell below their entry price and they would not want the market to come back down there a second time. And this is what we got. Uh, we got bad follow through for the bears. Right? That's terrible follow through for the bears. Another bear breakout, small bar followed by a bull bar. And this low is a test of this signal bar high. So this sell-off might simply be a uh, sell vacuum test of support, the high of the strong um, entry bar, bull, I mean signal bar, bull signal bar. We have a, a failed bear breakout. This bull inside bar creates a failed bear breakout. You could buy above its high. Uh, we have a little breakout of uh, that buy signal and then a pullback and another buy signal. Uh, it looks to me like we're forming a triangle. Uh, we're forming higher lows, not yet higher highs. The market stayed always in long. We never went short. Um, and it looks like we're testing a support level, uh, the high of this very strong bull reversal bar, and we're turning up. So I would buy above this bar. I would buy above this bar. And look what happened on this leg up. Uh, we got a bear reversal bar near the top of the developing trading range. So we may be forming a triangle. And we may get another push down. Um, trading range, buy low, sell high, scalp. Um, I would sell out of longs. I don't know that I would necessarily sell into shorts. I think we're always in long. And here we have um, eight or nine bars up, um, eight bars up without, or seven or eight bars without a bare body. So even with this uh, bare reversal bar, I would not take that short. Um, we tried to resume up here. This is a pullback from this breakout. So, um, you know, a potential buy here. But to me, this is a real problem. Um, we tried to break out of the trading range, and we have a big tail. Remember, every tail is a failed breakout of something. So we have a failed breakout and then a strong uh, bare body um, outside down. Um, I don't think I would go short. I think the range is becoming tighter. This is not a strong sell, up, uh, sell setup, and we're getting late in the day. Uh, but I would uh, exit any remaining longs probably below the bottom of this outside down bar. I would not want to see follow through from that reversal. I'm going to go through the same slides, um, this time um, with no notes on the slides. Um, there is another series of charts after all of this, uh, of, um, uh, uh, and I'll uh, discuss those when we get there.
Now I'm going to talk about a double bond, a du double bottom major trend reversal using bond futures. Clearly, we have a bear trend that is contained by a trend line. It's in a channel, and um, we may be forming a slightly lower low here and a reversal up. But since we have not clearly broken above a trend line, um, I would not be buying this. You could argue that we have a bear trend here and a trend line break and a lower low major trend reversal. Um, I don't think that's very much buying pressure and this is not a good looking signal bar so I personally would not take that buy. Alright so spike and channel bear trend. Channels usually evolve into trading ranges and you might get a reversal up and the rally may go all the way to the top of the channel. Okay, Channels often have three pushes down and there's often a failed bear breakout through the bottom of the bear channel followed by a reversal up. You know, you've got to be looking for signs uh, of a bottom whenever you see a bear channel. Okay, also if we do get a reversal up, you should start looking for signs of a major trend reversal. You want to see a break above the bear trend line, and uh, which is the top of the channel, a test of the moving average, although that's not necessary, and then you want to see a sell-off that goes down and tests the bottom of the bear. That's your context. And then you want to see a signal bar, a reversal up again, and that would be um, that would complete the buy setup. So we had a bear spike, this green box, and then a channel down, and we had the first push at the bottom of the spike, second push, and a third push. It does not matter that the third push is trying to turn up from um, the bottom of the channel without actually touching the channel. Sometimes that happens. Uh, to me, I think this is not a good buy and I would wait. However, what is taking place here is buying pressure. We're getting a break above the uh, bear trend line, the top of the channel, and we're getting consecutive bull trend bars closing on their highs. And here we have a gap bar. There's enough buying pressure so that the low of this bar is completely above the uh, moving average. Very often when you have a gap bar and a bear trend it leads to the final leg of the bear trend. So uh, some bears would short uh, below the low of this bar betting that the market would come down and test the bear low. So gap bars often lead to the final leg of trends. So we have the break of the trend line, the test of the moving average. Next we need a test of the bear low. So we need the bear trend to resume and then we have to look to see if there's a failure around the old low and you want the shape to be reasonably good. If the rally was 20 or more bars you want the bear test of the bear low to be 5 or 10 bars. So if that rally goes up for um, you know, let's say 20 bars and then it just drops for 2 bars I would be suspicious that the shape is not good enough. Uh, we don't, we'll probably have to test down more and I probably would not buy that test down as a higher low uh, major trend reversal. You want the sell off to be weak. Okay, you don't want a series of very big bear trend bars. You'd like it to be um, two or more legs and you'd like to see some buying pressure along the way like tails at the bottom of bars and maybe some bull bars as the market is selling off. This is what we got we have uh, a pretty strong uh, bear sell-off, not, uh, not what I typically would like. However, uh, we're double bottoming uh, at the prior low after breaking above the um, trend line with two good bars closing on their highs. We have a gap bar here, so bear is shorted uh, one tick below its low, and gap bars very often, most of the time, lead to the final leg of a bear. So I think this is an aggressive buy because the signal bar is a bear body and the sell-off was such a strong uh, bear spike. You know, it's a bear microchannel. But I think you can buy this. Maybe your probability of success is 40% or so. Uh, your protective stop is uh, one tick below the low of the bar. The bar is two ticks tall, so you entered one tick above. And your risk is four ticks. Since you're taking a setup, if you're taking this buy, you're taking a buy where the probability is only 40%. You need to go for a reward that's twice as big as the risk to get a positive trader's equation. So you need a profit target that's uh, 8 ticks above your entry price. <coughs>
Okay, what does the market need to make traders believe that it's always in long, that it's going higher? Uh, they either need a, a big bull entry bar, if the context is supportive, and here the context is. It's a possible double bottom major trend reversal. If you don't get a very big bull entry bar or bull breakout, you know, maybe you'll get two or three or four consecutive bull bars that are not necessarily big, but they're still consecutive uh, bull bars. You also want to see a break above the moving average. The uh, setup itself is not all that strong. We did not have much buying pressure, and we have a weak signal bar. So I would make sure to take at least half off, maybe the entire position off, at two times the um, initial risk. Here's the signal bar. The stop is one tick below its low. Here's your entry price. The risk is four ticks. Two times the risk is eight ticks, and the market went one tick above the profit-taking uh, limit order, so I would take at least half off um, at that price and then wait to see what happens. We did not get a strong bull bar here, but we did get a big one here, and we did go um, eight ticks uh, above the entry price. So. Uh, you know, um, bulls could have scalped out with uh, eight ticks while risking four ticks. So what do you do now? The bears see this as a large low two, two legs up and a bear trend, and they're expecting this to result in simply a broader bear channel. So they'll draw a trend line from this high across this high, betting that the trend will continue down. If I were long, um, you know, I probably would get out um, below the low of this bar. So I would have scalped out with eight ticks up around here. And then um, with the second attempt down, the market might be transitioning into a trading range. Um, I think it's reasonable to go flat or um, put your stop back to break even um, on the remaining half of your position. If a setup is not quite good enough, wait. You either wait for a second signal or a strong bull breakout. After a double bottom major trend reversal, uh, the bulls are going to try to form a higher low major trend reversal. Remember, most major trend reversals have low probability, you know, maybe 40 to 50 percent, and usually the entry bar does not trigger an always in reversal. You need a breakout after um, the uh, reversal triggers. To compensate for the low probability, you need to swing. You need to take a reward that's at least twice the size of your risk to get a positive trader's equation. You can only take a trade that has a positive trader's equation or else you're going to lose money. Do you allow pullbacks once the market's turn, turning up? Whenever you take a swing trade, you're looking for two or more legs up. And if you have two legs up, one leg up, pullback, two legs up, that means you have to be willing to allow pullbacks. So whenever you're swing trading, you're always allowing uh, pullbacks. And um, that means don't tighten your stop too soon. The first pullback often goes down below the entry price to trap out the weak longs. Um, strong bulls keep their stops um, below the most recent higher low. The sell-offs often come uh, from strong sell signal bars, and they tend to trap weak bulls out and trap weak bears in. When swing trading, don't be fooled. You know, rely on your protective stop, and don't be trapped out of a good trade. All right, so this is what we had. We had a sell-off and a reversal up. Not a very good-looking signal bar, but notice what happened here, right? Your entry price was right here, and this pullback missed hitting break-even stops for the bulls. Um, so it's a higher low major trend reversal buy setup. Um, arguably a wedge bull flag. We had a push down here and then up, a push down here and then up, and then a push down here and then up. So to me, this is a higher low major trend reversal buy signal. So if traders did not buy here, excuse me, if they did not buy here, they can uh, take a swing trade here. Again, bear signal bar, not good for the bulls. So that lowers the percentage, maybe to 40%. If traders bought here and exited, let's say, half here, they could put their half back on, again, 
their second half back on here. Once the bull resumes, you raise the protective stop to either below the most recent higher low or to break even. Most successful traders will not let the market come back to their entry price a second time. Since the probability is only 40% or so, you need a reward at least two times bigger than your risk. So you place a sell limit order to take partial profits, profits maybe half, uh, once the market reaches a target that is twice as many ticks as in your protective stop. At this point, we're getting late in the day. And if you bought the higher low major trend reversal and you're trying to see if you can get out at two times your risk, you have a limit order to exit up here. However, you have a problem. We're running out of time in the day. You don't want to give back all of your profit. And now we have three pushes up. So this might function as a wedge bear flag. Um, I probably would not exit below the first attempt down, but at this point, it's another bear bar closing on its low, bear bar closing on its low, second attempt down, second failed breakout attempt above this high. Um, I would probably go flat and just stay flat for the rest of the day, even though the market did not reach my uh, target. And that is the end of this module on trading major trend reversal bottoms. This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. This module has to do with trading major trend reversals that fail. Remember, the 40-60 uh, rule, all setups have between a 40 to 60% uh, chance of resulting in a profitable trade, and that means you'll lose 40, 40 to 60% of the time, even when you have a great setup. At any given moment, there's an institution taking the opposite side of every trade, and therefore there's a valid bull and bear case at, at, on every tick. The assumption is that all institutions are profitable and that every trade that takes place, every tick that takes place, there's a buyer and there's a seller, so there's a way to make profit um, as a buyer and as a seller if you manage your trade correctly. When you're looking for a top you're waiting for a break below the bull trend line and then a moving average test. And then traders will watch the next rally, especially if it's weak. They're expecting the next rally to fail around the prior high, and this would create a major trend reversal setup. So if you have the context, a trend line break, a moving average test, and then a rally testing the old high, and you have a signal bar, then you have a major trend reversal uh, sell setup. Here's an example. We have a strong bull spike and then a channel, which is a much weaker bull trend, and you can draw a trend line below. You can argue that it's a wedge top. We had a failed breakout above the top of the wedge, and uh, the market is trying to reverse down with a second entry short. The uh, sell-off fell below the trend line, and it tested the moving average, and it lasted a lot of bars, so there's reasonable selling pressure in here enough to make traders think that we might get a more, um, a more serious reversal uh, after testing the prior high of the uh, bull. Within this bull spike, you can say the bull spike lasted from here to here, and within it there's a smaller spike. A lot of times there are nested patterns, patterns within patterns. For example, here's another small uh, bull spike, and um, again, the same channel. So we have a rally, we have a bull breakout, and it's a spike, and there are three little pushes up within it, so there's a micro wedge, and this is a reasonable lower high major trend reversal. It probably does not have a 60% chance of success, um, but you have to assume it has at least a 40% chance of success because of the 40-60 rule. Everything has between a 40 to 60% chance of success. The sell-off lasted a lot of bars. There were a lot of bear bars in it. So good selling pressure. Um, the signal bar is not all that great. We're in a tight trading range here, so a little bit less reliable. So maybe a 40% chance of success on uh, selling this as a lower high major trend reversal. <clears throat> now.
The initial protective stop is one tick above the signal bar and the entry is one tick below and in this case the stop is 66 cents away from the entry price. This is Apple, a five minute chart and right now it's a $600 stock. So even a little bar like this is still 60 cents tall. You enter on this bar and you, you have a good looking entry bar. Not very big but closing on its low. And then you have a great follow through bar. So now you have a two bar reversal. This bear bar is basically totally erasing this bull bar. On some higher time frame chart, maybe a 30 minute chart or a 60 minute chart, this is probably a reversal bar. But look what happened on the next, uh, uh, the very next bar. Okay, a huge bull breakout bar. It went way above the bear bar, and it also went above the signal bar. So if traders relied on a stop above the high of the signal bar, they were stopped out with a 66 cent loss. In general, when you have a good looking entry bar and then a really good follow through bar, most traders would lower their stop to above the high of this very strong bear bar because if this is the start of a bear trend, the market should not come back above the high of such a strong bear bar. So most traders would have gotten out around break even instead of with the 66 cents loss. Look what followed the bull breakout bar, immediately a failure, right? A bear bar, a doji, yes, but still a failure. And this is a, a second entry for a, um, major trend reversal. This time we're a little bit above the top, so you can call it a double top, you can call it a higher high major trend reversal, but it's still a major trend reversal. Doji signal bar, not great. Doji inside bar, not great. And one other big problem with this is this was a surprise move, right? This was the, a low probability event to completely erase this uh, bear bar. And whenever the market does the lower probability choice, it usually has a second leg up. So we may, we probably will get a second leg up, but even if it's a 55, 60% chance of more up, there's still a 40 to 45% chance that this major trend reversal will work and allow traders to get a reward that's at least twice as big as their risk. Traders who took this, uh, second entry short, the higher high or double top major trend reversal short, went short one tick below the low of this bar. So they got short on this bar and their stop is above probably the swing high. There's not much difference between these two bars, but if they put their stop above the swing high, their risk is $1.29. As soon as they got filled, they had problems. Um, first of all, their signal bar is a doji bar following a second doji bar. So that increases the risk of sideways instead of down. And then their entry bar has a big tail sitting above the moving average. We broke above the moving average here. We tried to break below and we reversed up sharply here. And it looks like we're holding above it here. And also this was a low probability event and low probability events usually have a second leg. So this is not a um, high probability short. It's probably a 40% short. But with the reward being at least twice the risk, it's still mathematically reasonable to do. <clears throat> All right, so this is not good. Now we have a little two-bar reversal here um, and uh, a bull body, and it looks like we're holding above the moving average. So we may get a second leg up. Um, the bears, their stop is probably above this bar, they might get out above this bull bar because I think the bulls can make a case that this is a pullback buy from this strong bull breakout. So I think it's okay to exit um, a short above that, uh, above that bar. This bear bar, by the way, the bulls can argue that it's simply a pullback from this breakout and it's testing the II um, buy setup. Also, the bulls can argue that these three pushes down are a wedge bull flag. This is the breakout. This is the pullback. And it's a breakout test of the buy entry. And therefore, it's a buy above the high of this bar. 
we have another breakout and then another pullback, so another buy signal. You know, the market very often has buy signals while sell signals are active, and that is especially common in trading ranges, and the market has been in a trading range. Actually, you can argue it's been in a trading range all the way back here, so for most of the day it's in a trading range. It's also in a bull channel forming higher highs and lows, but it is in a trading range. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that same uh, sequence, but uh, from um, the eyes of a bull. So the bull saw um, the strong sell-off breaking the trend line. So they're aware that the market broke below the trend line. But they see this as a wedge bull flag, three pushes down, and a possible double bottom uh, bull flag with this earlier low, the bottom of the channel. And they have a good-looking bull bar, and then um, an II, a bull II. It's actually an III with a couple bull bars in between. So the bulls uh, would buy above the high of um, this bull bar, and they have a very good-looking entry bar. Their initial stop is below the low of the first signal bar, the swing low, and they're risking about a dollar forty-two. They're not all that happy with the follow-through um, tight trading range. Instead of a series of bull bars, you know, they got a tight trading range, and they're certainly not happy with this big bear trend bar. But um, the, mar the market at this point has not hit their stop. After this big bull bar, a lot of traders would move their stop to one tick below its low. I think it's also okay to keep the stop below the um, higher low. You know, in a bull trend, the market is making a series of higher highs and lows, and the best place for a swing stop is below the most recent higher low. Uh, the wider the stop, the higher the probability of success. However, if this is a bull, a strong bull trend, it should not fall below the bottom of this strong bull breakout bar. So if you do trail your stop to below its low, your actual risk now is only 27 cents. <coughs> okay, we have another strong bull breakout. We have another high above this high and above this high as well. So the bulls will raise their stop to below the most recent higher low. And now this is um, 15 cents above their entry price. So if they get stopped out, they end up with a 15 cent uh, profit. Late in the day, okay, we're at around 1230 or so, when you have a big open profit on a trend day, you should be looking for reasons to take your profit just in case there's a sharp sell-off in the final bars of the day. Here we're getting a parabolic curve, so a parabolic um, you can call it a parabolic wedge. We have three, a spike and three pushes up, one, two, three. And we have a good-looking bear reversal bar. Uh, to me, this is a reasonable place to take profits below the low of that bar. And if you did, you're, you'd have $7.44 profit with an initial risk of $1.42. And that is an excellent trade. Let me go through the same slides without marks on the chart. So this is the spike up and the channel with possible three pushes and a weak sell signal bar. Second entry short below this bear bar uh, does not look like a strong sell-off. Good bar for the bear. Bears, a couple good bars for the bears. Uh, micro double bottom, but after these two bear bars, I do not think these two bull bars are enough to erase that bearishness. We get some buyers around the moving average. Maybe a small gap bar. Maybe the high is slightly below the moving average. Trying to set up a low two short with a bear signal bar. But we're getting close to the bottom of the channel. And there may be buyers near the bottom of the channel. Good looking bear bar, but immediately reversed by the next bar. Okay, we got um, a micro double bottom right here with an inside bar. So that's effectively a small triangle. Um, so the bulls might want to buy this. Um, the bears are expecting that the next leg up will be the last and that we'll get a major trend reversal. Okay, the bears don't want to see that. Um, they want to see a weak leg up to test the prior 
high. They don't want to see a strong bull breakout. Okay, but this is good for the bears. The market is losing momentum. No follow through after that strong bull breakout. The bulls still think the breakout will succeed and they think any sell-off here will be simply a pullback from this breakout and they'll look to buy. Their stop might be below the low of this bar, might be below uh, the um, recent higher low. Now we've got a spike, that little spike, and now we have three little pushes up. So we might get uh, a pullback here. Uh, the bulls uh, will hope that the pullback is not strong enough to be a reversal and the bears want the, uh, the pullback to be strong enough uh, to be the start of a bear trend. They want this to be a lower high major trend reverse. Good start for the bears, um, but they need follow through. They need to get below the most recent higher low because otherwise it's still a bull channel. If it continues to form higher highs and lows, it's still a bull trend. At this moment, it's still always in long but it's also on that major trend reversal short. A very strong bear bar, the bears will probably move their stops to one tick above its high. The swing bulls are still long, uh, but they're looking for signs of strength. They do not want the bears to have follow through. Uh, for example, they don't want the market to fall below this breakout bar. They do not want the market to fall below the breakout point where the breakout bar occurred. They do not want the market to fall below the most recent higher low. Great bar for the bulls. It turns out the bear bar was simply a test of the bull breakout. Uh, bad bar for the bears. However, weak follow through after this strong bull reversal. The bears might try another uh, short here. They can argue wedge bear flag, three pushes up, one, two, three, and a um, double top or higher high major trend reversal. For the bulls, um, they see this as simply a pullback from their breakout, and this is a breakout pullback buy. For the bears, they're not happy with this. They were looking for a strong signal bar, or strong entry bar, and instead they got a bull, they got a doji uh, holding above the moving average. This is bad for the bear case. Another bull bar closing on its high. All right. What about this as a um, higher high major trend reversal? We have uh, three pushes up, so there's a wedge, bull, uh, wedge bear flag here and a higher high major trend reversal. But we're getting too many bars up. We're uh, in a six or seven bar bull micro channel, and the entire move up from this low is in a very tight channel. Um, and so there's a lot of buying pressure going on here. Too many bull bars, not enough bearishness, and the signal bar is not all that strong. So to me, I would not take that short. It didn't even trigger. The market rallied higher, and now we're starting to become uh, parabolic. Uh, we have the slope between these two highs, and then the slope even gets steeper between these two highs. So this is getting climactic. We're late in the day, and we have a very strong bear signal bar. Uh, the channel up is too tight, I think, to be looking for shorts, but it's strong enough, I think, to exit longs. You need um, to get out before the close of the day if you're day trading, and it's possible we could get a sharp sell-off here, so I think uh, you know this is a good location uh, to exit longs one tick below the low of that strong bear reversal bar. And we got uh, a slight um, weak bull channel into the close. All right, well, what about when you're looking for a bottom? So if you have a bear trend and then a break above the bear channel, above the bear trend line, and a test of the moving average, Traders will look at the next sell-off, especially if it's weak, because it might fail around the prior low, and it might create a major trend reversal buy setup. Here's an example. This is the USO, the ETF that um, um, mimics the uh, crude oil uh, futures contract. And we're obviously in a bear trend. We have a bear channel. And... Um, the channels are not always perfect. Sometimes the market pokes below the bottom or pokes above the top, yet the channel can continue. Uh, so when you're drawing channels, you just look for a best fit and don't worry about perfection. Okay, here you can argue that we have three pushes down. You can say four or five pushes down, but uh, we have a little bear spike, another spike, another spike. 
a micro double bottom. The market went down and up and down. Um, so we're starting to get some signs of buying pressure. Not a strong signal bar, certainly not after that very big bear bar. But, um, you know, it could lead to a reversal, a test of the bottom of the channel. At a minimum, we should get to the top of the channel. After three pushes down in a channel, uh, we probably will get two legs sideways to up. Um, to me, this is not a uh, bull reversal. It's not a strong wedge bottom. So if I were buying here, I would only be buying for a scalp. I think the market's still always in short. Uh, I think it's better for the bulls to wait for a stronger signal, like maybe a major trend reversal. So if we get a strong rally, bulls will look to buy a pullback. And that's just what happened. We have uh, six consecutive bull trend bars, and two of them have very big bull bodies. So um, the bulls are very, very strong here. And we broke well above the moving average, well above the channel and uh, lots of good buying pressure. So traders will be looking to buy um, the, a test of the bear low. Um, the bears, will they short this? It's a gap bar. It's the first gap bar in the bear trend, the first bar with a low above the moving average. And very often that is a good short, but with these six bars up, I think the market has switched to always in long. So I'd rather look to buy a pullback. Not all that good for uh, the, the bulls. You don't want to see a series of bear bars. Um, but that's not a, a reliable high or low. Uh, we have three consecutive bear bars. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather buy something that looks stronger. So sellers above, and we got another leg down. We have a bear breakout, two bear bars, closed below the lows of the prior bars. But now we have a failed... A breakout bar. We have a bull inside bar. So the bulls can argue this is a high two buy. Here's the high one. Here's the high two. Uh, they're expecting a higher low major trend reversal, and this could be it. But there's too much selling pressure in this uh, move down. The channel is too tight. Uh, I think it's better to wait for a second entry. And what about now? We've had three pushes down. One, two, three. IIs often become final flags, so this could be a small final flag. Uh, this could be a breakout test of the original buy signal, the lowest high of the day. And we also have a, a strong bull reversal bar closing on its high, a two-bar reversal. Um, double bottom, micro double bottom with this bar and that bar. Uh, to me, this is a very good-looking setup for a higher low major trend reversal. Uh, the sell-off lost momentum. We got some buying pressure and it's a breakout test of the earlier signal. I think this is a strong buy setup. You, know, you can call it um, a wedge bull flag, three pushes down. You can call it simply a high two, one push down, and then a second push down that's subdivided. And we have the II final flag and the breakout test. So there are a lot of reasons to buy. Great looking entry bar after a great looking um, signal bar. So, so far this is looking very good for the bulls. Okay. The initial stop is uh, one tick below the signal bar. Your entry price is one tick above. Um, probability, in this particular case, it's probably better than 50-50 uh, that we're going to rally. So, you may not have to go, go for a target that's two times the risk. But, if this is a major trend reversal, we should get up at least to this high, test that prior high. And this target, two times the initial risk, I think is a reasonable target. So far, so good. We're losing steam a little bit. We have a bear uh, reversal bar. Um, the bears want this to be a, um, a failed bear, a failed bull breakout. The bulls want it to be simply uh, setting up a pullback from this strong uh, breakout of this bear channel. We don't know yet which. To me, I think the bull case is stronger. <clears throat> okay, so bear reversal bar, three stronger bull bars, um, and you're still on the long. Protective stop is below the signal bar, maybe below the entry bar. At this point, the entry bar is so strong, I think a lot of traders would raise their stop to one tick below its low, because after this strong a bull spike, um, they'd want the bulls to be in control, and they would not want the market to fall below their um, 
entry bar. All right, this is a problem, right? Uh, for the bears, if they took the short, um, betting on more lower highs and lower lows, uh, this is a great looking entry bar and their stop would be above the high of the signal bar or the entry bar, but they're about the same. For the bulls, they were hoping for just a weak pullback and then a resumption of the trend. Um, so this is not good for the bulls, but they have their stops either below this entry bar or the signal bar to make sure that their losses don't get too big. So we have the bull breakout. The bulls want this to be a pullback and then for the trend to resume. The bears see this bear bar as a failed bull breakout and resumption of the bear. All right, it fell below the entry bar. It fell below the high of the signal bar. It fell below the signal bar and it fell below the low of the day. And it did so with four big bear bars, each body getting bigger. So the bearish momentum is increasing and the market probably is now always in short. So the bulls are out. Bears might be selling closes. They might have uh, sold here and then added with each bear close. The bulls, uh, they can argue that maybe we'll get a, a lower low major trend reversal. But this bear spike is so strong that there probably is going to be at least a second leg down uh, after any kind of a pullback. <clears throat> so four consecutive bear bars, the body's getting bigger, so the selling pressure is increasing, and the market at this point is probably always in short, and the bottom, this higher low, failed. Um, since it was such a high probability trade, that means a lower probability event occurred, and whenever the lower probability event occurs, you always have to be looking for at least a second leg down. So it's probably okay to sell this close, uh, maybe with a stop above the high of the bar, or maybe a stop above um, any of these other highs. Always in short, okay, let's say you put your stop above the high of the bar, and you sold that close, then your target is down here. Can you use a target one times um, the size of the risk? Yes, because the market just became always in short, and uh, it's probably going lower, probably means 60%. So if your probability is 60% and you put your stop here, you have a 60% chance of the market reaching your target before it hits your stop. For the bulls, this is a failure. All right, We have a breakout and now a failed breakout. The bear spike is much stronger than this bull reversal bar. Um, the bulls see this as a two-legged lower low major trend reversal, but I think this is not strong enough to overcome this bear bar and certainly not strong enough to overcome these four bear bars. So there should be sellers above. I would not take that buy. That's a terrible entry bar for the bulls who made the mistake of buying above this bar. For the bears, th these two bars are simply a pullback from this strong bear spike, this strong bear breakout. Um, I think you can short that close. I think you can short uh, the low one here. Um, but your stop at a minimum is above the high of this bar, maybe all the way above the top of the rear spike. Always in short, therefore high probability, therefore it can go for a reward equal to the risk instead of two times the risk. Here's the low one short, the breakout pullback short, decent entry bar for the bears, and um, you're still on the short from this close. Uh, the bears who shorted this uh, low one after this strong bear bar, they might put their stops above its high. They might put their stops above the signal bar high. They may have stops above any of these bear bars. Most bears who took this short, if they took it as a scalp, they're not going to allow pullbacks. And after this bear bar closed and they saw it was a strong bear bar, they probably would put a scalping stop above its high. The swing bears would use a wider stop, like above this strong bear bar, or maybe above the high of uh, the bear spike. So after this bear bar closed, the shorts who shorted below this bar can calculate their actual risk. Their initial risk might have been above the high of this bear bar, and now they see that if they had a stop one tick above the high of this bar, 
um, they would not have been stopped out. So their actual risk is their entry price, and to the stop, that would have allowed them to hold their position one tick above the high of this bar, and two times that actual risk is down here, which is around one time uh, the size of um, the initial stop from the sit sell at this close to one tick above the high of that bar. <coughs> All right, so we have another bull breakout. We had three pushes down, one, two, three. A couple of bull dojis, so we're starting to get some buying pressure. And we came almost to two times the actual risk based upon that low one short. Um, I don't know if we're at the profit target based upon the height of that bear bar, but I do know we're starting to get parabolic. Um, the slope is increasing, and that increases the chances that this is a climactic uh, sell climax and end of the move. For the bulls, they see a, um, a bull inside bar after a sell climax, and it's a parabolic sell climax. We're getting late in the day, only a few bars left. You need to take profits before the end of the day if you're a day trader. This would be a good location, one tick above the high of this attempt to reverse up because you don't, you don't want to take a chance of a strong bull spike. So if it's making any reasonable attempt to reverse up in the final bars of the day, um, I would get out. Remember the 40-60 rule or 60-40 rule. All setups have between a, 24, a 40 and 60% chance of uh, resulting in a profitable trade and a 40 to 60% chance of uh, losing, even with great setups. And there's always a valid bull and bear argument at any, at any moment. Good trader's equation. Both the bulls and the bears can have positive trader's equations, right? Because you can have a positive trader's equation with only a 40% chance of success. That means the opposite side of the trade. Let's say you short and you have a 40% chance of success. The person who sold it to you has a 60% chance of success. So you can have both the bulls and bears simultaneously owning positions with positive traders' equations because, let's say, both of them have probabilities less than 50%. Um, as long as they're going for rewards two times greater than their risk, um, they are holding uh, trades that are mathematically sound, reasonable trades. One side will win, the other side will lose, but if they manage their trades correctly and the situation comes up 10 times in a row, um, both will end up uh, winners. Remember, you're going for a swing trade when your probability is less than 50%, 50% or less, you have to be going for a swing trade. You have to be going for a reward at least twice as big as your risk. And if you do, and even if you lose more than 50% of the time, you'll still make money. Let's go back to this bear channel in the USO and take a look at the bear case. You know, I, I showed you the bull case. Here's um, the bear case. We have a very strong breakout, but we have a gap bar below, above the moving average. The bears see this as just another higher low. Yes, it went above um, excuse me, another lower high. Yes, it went above this high, but it did not yet go above this high. So it may simply be another lower high in a broader channel. So if this starts to turn down, they'll take this bear trend line, instead of anchoring it up here, they'll take this anchor and put it up here and just look at the whole thing as a possible broader bear channel. All right, so that's what they did. Um, they moved their trend channel line from uh, from these highs up to this high and that high. And then look what happened. Um, remember we had that other reversal down? Well, that other reversal down was at this new trend channel line. It's a failed breakout above the uh, top of the new flatter bear channel. The market at this point, it's in a trading range. You know, the past 30, 40 bars, sideways, up and down, and it's confusing. The bulls see a higher low major trend reversal and they're hoping for a series of higher lows and highs. The bears see this as simply a bear trend that's continuing to form lower highs and lower lows. So the bears took that short. You know, they're viewing it as a reversal down from the top of the channel, and they're going for a risk that's two times their reward, which is down here, and they'll look to exit with their profit here. 
and they obviously got filled. Maybe they'd take half off and then swing the balance, and they'd take the rest off above this little bull bar going into the end of the day. Here's the same series of slides, but without notes. Uh, obvious bear channel, lots of selling pressure, not a strong bottom. However, we may be transitioning into a trading range because uh, we're getting rallies. We're stair-stepping down, so we might get up to the moving average. Good for the bulls. The market's probably becoming always in long. Clearly always in long. Follow through definitely always in long. So probably buyers below. Uh, you can take the short um, if you think there's enough room for a scalp, but I think any short at this point is a scalp only because the market's always in long. Another bear bar, not um, enough um, of a pullback for the major trend reversal, so I would not take long. There's the trigger on the long, probably sellers above, and but will probably go more sideways to down, and then form a major trend reversal uh, signal bar. Trying to get a bear breakout, but as long as we're holding above the bottom of that bull spike, I think the market stays always in long. All right, hesitation. Two legs down, but this second leg down, the two bear bars are stronger than the buy signal bar, so I would not buy yet. For the bears, a failed um, high two attempt and a resumption of the bear trend, but I think we've been in a trading range um, now for um, you know 30 bars maybe, and I don't want to be selling at the bottom of a trading range, especially after the market went always in long on this very strong bull spike. Okay, great looking bull uh, signal bar, possible II final flag, breakout test, uh, you can argue a wedge bull flag. I think this is an excellent buy setup. Great entry bar. Good follow through. Bear bar, um, not ideal, but still I think always in long and uh, probably uh, buyers below. The three bar bull spike looks more convincing than the bear um, uh, reversal bar. Swing bears can short this, hoping for another uh, lower high and then another low of the day, new low. And they can see this as a potential channel, a broader channel. We're still forming lower highs and lower lows. They saw this as a double top bear flag. Um, I would not take that short after the six strong bull bars. Too much risk of buyers below and a major trend reversal bottom. At this point, you could take this for a swing short, but I still think the odds favor the bulls. Not what the bulls want to see. Clearly not what the bulls want to see. So this is a problem. Uh, the market fell below the entry bar for the bulls. And it looks like it's probably going to fall below the signal bar as well. These three bear bars, bodies getting bigger in size. Um, even if the market turns up here, there are probably sellers above. Another very big bear bar. Uh, to me, the market's in, it's always in short at this point. And uh, that bear spike, that four bar bear spike, will probably lead to a measured move down. The bulls see this as a large high two at the bottom of a trading range. Uh, yes, the market's in a trading range, and we're near the bottom. Uh, but this four bear bar spike is enough uh, selling pressure for me not to take the first reversal up. I think there probably are sellers above this bar. And there were three pushes down. A bull reversal bar, you can argue a high three. The market went above this bull bar and went above this bull bar. Uh, maybe it's a long above this bar. But the channel down from this high is so tight that um, I personally would not take the long. If we come up to the moving average around the high of this bar, I might look for a double top bear flag short. We did not even trigger. We broke to the downside again. But now this is the fourth little push down. Um, one, two, three. Four. So this could function as a high four buy in a channel, uh, and a lot of times that leads to at least uh, a little rally, maybe up to the moving average. It's late in the day, so for me, I would get out of shorts if it gets above this bar triggering the high four. And that's where we uh, close. We just went sideways into the close. And that's the end of my module on ma uh, trading major trend reversals when they fail. This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. The current module is about trading a strong bull breakout. Remember, 
a strong bull, that phrase is identical to the word breakout, and that phrase is identical to the word spike, and all three of them mean that you should buy. So you should look for signs of a strong bull breakout when you think one might be happening. You'd like to see uh, big bull trend bars, at least one, preferably several in a row, um, consecutive strong bull trend bars. You want to see small tails, preferably on the tops of the bars. You want the bars to be closing on their highs. And also the context has to be supportive of the market going higher. So, for example, if you're in a trading range and you have two bull bars uh, taking you to the top of the trading range, that's not likely to result in a strong bull breakout. That's more likely to be a buy vacuum test of the top of the, hating, uh, of the trading range. So if you're in the spike phase of a bull trend, you have to get long. And you can't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, you can always buy at the market, which is fine. You can buy at the close of any bull bar and any bear trend bar as well. If the market's going up and it forms a bear trend bar and you're in a strong bull trend, that attempt by the bears will probably fail, so the math favors buying um, the close of that um, bear bar and also buying below its low. Um, you can also buy above the high of any bar. If the market's going up and it has a pause, you can buy above the high of that bar. If the market goes up two or three bars in a row, you can buy at the high of uh, any of those bars as well. And you can press your bets and buy breakouts above swing highs. So if the market goes up and pulls back, you can buy as the pullback turns up, but you can also buy as the market goes above the prior high. And you can buy, obviously, any small pullback, a bull flag. You know, the key is you have to get long. And everyone knows the stop is far away. You know, when the market is racing up, you know, your stop is far away. Uh, and that, that's scary to traders. Well, buy small. You know, don't think about it. You know, cut your position in half. Cut it into a quarter. Just trade one-fifth of, of a position, but at least get something on. And then look to add on later um, when you have opportunities. Since it's a strong trend, a breakout, you, look, you want to swing at least part of your position. Uh, during different times uh, in the strong bull trend, you might want to scalp. For example, if you're buying closes, you might want to scalp uh, uh, those additional entries. When you do, you use a tight, a tighter stop, but wherever you choose for your stop, make sure that the reward that you choose is at least as big as your uh, risk. And advanced traders, they can scale in. They can scale in as the market's going higher. They can scale in during a pullback as the market is uh, going against them. Here's a weak bull breakout, and because it's a weak breakout, you have to expect that you might get a deep pullback. The market sold off sharply here and became always in short, probably on this bar or this bar, and it immediately reversed up um, after testing near yesterday's close. Yesterday was a bear channel, big gap butt breakout, and three pushes down, one, two, three. So this could simply be uh, an opening reversal, a pullback from the gap up breakout above this bear channel. So we have a bear channel, bull flag, breakout, and then a very deep pullback almost down to yesterday's close. In any case, um, at this bar, you might think, oh, this, this is not good for the bears. A strong bull bar, big bar, uh, close near its high, and then a follow-through bar. And then we have another bull breakout. Its close is above the high of the prior bar. So most traders at this point would say, yeah, I, th I think uh, the bulls are in control and that the sell-off was just an opening reversal, it's just a sell vacuum test of support in the area of yesterday's close. So at this point, traders are always in long. So that means they're expecting at least a second leg up, and they're going to look to buy pullbacks. They can buy this close. They can buy above the high of the prior bar. They can buy for any reason, but their stop is below the bottom of the bull spike, which would be the bottom of this big bull bar, or possibly the most or, or the low, right? So some traders will say it goes below the bull bar. Others will put it here. It doesn't matter. Uh, the further the stop is, the more likely you'll be successful. However, when you have a, a three-bar bull spike that looks like this, small tails uh, gapping up, this bar closes above that bar, this bar closes above that bar, this bar closes above that, this bar. You know, we have lots of signs of strength that the breakout is strong. Uh, most traders would not want the market to come back below the 
um, bottom of the spike. In fact, most traders would not want the market to fall more than a tick or so below the top of the signal bar. So anyway, when you see, you're seeing the market flip doji in long, then you see doji, doji, bull breakout, but a big tail, another uh, bull breakout, but a big tail, more tails. At this point, you're thinking, yeah, this could just be turning into a trading range day. You know, big down, big up, big confusion. Confusion equals trading range. In any case, it's still always in long, so traders are expecting a pullback, but at this point, they're probably thinking the pullback will be deep, and it probably will be trading range type behavior, falling below prior uh, minor higher lows. As long as it stays above the bottom of the spike, though, and as long as it does not clearly become always in short, it's still always in long, so you can buy for any reason. So we have a bear breakout on this bar. We have some follow through here. The bulls will say, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's not nearly as strong as this. It's still always in long. I'm going to buy the close of this bear bar. I'm going to buy the close of this bear bar. I'm going to buy above its high. And that's what the bulls are thinking. The bears, on the other hand, are thinking, well, we had a very strong bear breakout initially. We have another lower high. So we have a high, lower high, lower high, low, lower low, lower low. So at this point, we're still in a bear trend. We're forming lower highs and lower lows, a pretty broad channel. But in their minds, they're still willing to uh, short. Maybe if it gets above this high or this high, they'll think, uh, maybe a trading range uh, and not a uh, bear trend. But they'll still, they'll still look to short. So all through here, in fact, all through here, both the bulls and the bears are active, and both, you have to assume, are profitable. You, know, you have to assume that institutions are profitable. And at any given moment, you have institutions buying and you have institutions selling, and both are going to make a profit. When the market is unclear as it is today, right, traders know, or the institutions know, that whenever it's unclear, the probability is around 50%, maybe even 40%. But in either case, any trade that they take, they know that they need to go for a reward at least twice as big as their risk to have a positive trader's equation, to have the math work out on the trade. So the bulls will uh, buy anywhere through here, uh, and they'll go for a reward twice their risk. The bears will sell anywhere in here. Who knows where their stop is? It may be all the way up here, right? And they'll scale in higher. So, you know, they'll short here, and they'll short here, they'll short here, they'll short here. And, um, you know, they're managing their trade. The bulls, you know, they bought, they're buying, they bought all the way up through here. They buy here, they buy above here, they buy here. And they buy uh, this bear breakout, and they buy this, right? So the bulls are buying, the bears are selling, but both sides are managing their trades. Probably most are scaling in. If you're a home trader, an individual trader, and you saw this always in long, you'd probably buy that close. You might buy this, but you'd look and say, yeah, it's good. It's enough to flip it always in long, but it's not all that strong. So there probably will be a deep pullback. Had you bought this, you might've scalped out for uh, you know 20 or 30 ticks expecting a deeper pullback. Had you not, had you bought it and, and you did not scalp out and you traded small enough, you would have looked to add on during a pullback. So you may have bought more here. If you bought here, your full size position, and so you could not scale in long. And let's say you did not scalp out here. Uh, you'd, you'd hold long through this pullback and rely on your stop looking for a second leg up. The market has an obvious second leg up here, but a two-bar reversal, bear bar near the high of the day, probably at this point you're concluding the day is a trading range day. The follow-through on the buying is just not good enough, so it's probably a bull leg and a trading range rather than a bull leg and a trend. So had you bought here, you probably would uh, get out of your uh, final position here, maybe take out half here and go to break even on your stop. And it looks like this came pretty close to testing the stop. So the point of the slide is when you see the market flip to always in long, you have to be expecting a second leg up. We got the second leg up here. And as, if it's always in long, you can buy at the market as long as you put your stop in the appropriate location. If the stop is too far, you have to trade smaller so that your actual risk is uh, the same. So, you know, don't get upset. You know, the market, this, is, this is the day that you have. You have to trade the market that you have, not the one that you want. You know, sure, you want a strong, uh, much stronger bull breakout. You want the, you know, five or six bars closing way up here. That's not what you have. This is the market that you have. 
uh, you have a, uh, a weak bull breakout, but always in long, so we should get a second leg up. And you got it at this point. So whenever the, the breakout is not all that strong, uh, you have to assume that there'll be a uh, deeper pullback. And that's okay. It's still tradable. Okay, you have to decide early. Uh, okay, so the context is good. We have a bull trend, a high two buy into yesterday's close, a strong first bar of the day, second bar of the day, bull bar, and then right above the moving average, we have a very strong bull trend bar. So we have a high two buy. Here's the high one. Here's the high two. So a high two pullback and a strong bull trend and a strong bull signal bar. A pretty good entry bar. Tail, not ideal. And then on the breakout to the new high of the day, we closed on the high tick. So we have consecutive bull trend bars following two other bull trend bars. We have a reversal up from the moving average. It's an opening reversal. We were up, we traded down, and we reversed up. And we have a strong uh, signal bar over here. So this is a um, likely uh, strong bull trend, and you need to get long. Remember, if a breakout is successful, it may go for many, many bars without any pullbacks. And if you wait for a pullback where you can enter with a smaller risk, you may end up missing a huge trend. You're never going to be more than 60% certain of any trade. The market lives between 40 and 60% probability all the time. Don't get paralyzed by the 40% chance of loss. You know, 60%, that's as good as it gets. And if you're a trader, you got to trade. You know, that's, that's what you do for a living. And if you have 60% certainty of anything, anything uh, you've got to take the trade. Once you think that the market has become always in long, in other words, once you think that the bulls have control and that the market's going higher, put at least a small position on right away, you know, on the close of a bar, uh, on a, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the market. It doesn't matter. Um, you can see the module on... Um, breakouts and on trading uh, strong trends to um, you know get other ideas you know should you wait for a breakout okay you see you at this point you know it's always in long and there's a sense of urgency the market's closing at the high here many ticks above the high of this bar this bar closed several ticks above the high of this bar we closed at a new high of the day uh, we're in a bull trend you know the market's going higher right so should you wait for a pullback? The pullback might not come until the market's way up here. So you cannot wait for a pullback. You have to get long. The institutions are buying. There's heavy volume in these bars. I didn't check, but I know that there is. So the institutions are buying heavily. If you want to make money, you have to do what they're doing. And they're buying heavily. you got to buy. Another bull bar. Yes, a little tail, but still a very strong bull close. So buy, you know, where's your stop? You look at it and you say, well, my stop may have to be all the way down here or maybe below the low of this breakout bar. That's right. That's where it has to be. Calculate how much you have to risk and then trade appropriately small, but at least trade. Another bull bar, a little bit bigger tail, so we're starting to lose momentum, but you're still uh, in a very strong bull spike. Uh, stop probably below the bottom of the spike, maybe below this breakout to the new high of the day. <clears throat> okay, decide early. I mentioned consecutive trend bars, reversal up from the moving average, opening reversal, strong signal bar, a follow-through bar, all right? Another follow-through bar, clearly a strong bull trend, okay? You can buy closes. You can buy the close of any of these bars. You can even buy the close of this bar if you're taking it for a swing because your stop is down here. During this pullback, you would not have been stopped out, and experienced traders would have added on. They would have bought more here. Um, a, a second entry long, here's the first, second entry long at the moving average, uh, wedge bull flag, three or four pushes down, uh, so they, they would have added more here. They may have gotten out part or all on the test of the uh, earlier entry, but they would have been buying. Again, closing on the high tick, closing near the high. Another strong bull bar, another bull spike. Traders will buy closes. Even right here, even though uh, it's a third push up, one, two, three, a strong close, traders will buy closes. Once they see this, a strong bear reversal bar, they may place a limit order to get out break even, 
and they did over here, and that's what created this tail. A lot of traders who bought closes here um, were looking for an opportunity to get out without a loss. So when the market came back to their entry price, they uh, sold out and um, had break even and will wait for a bigger pullback. They got a bigger pullback, and then the trend is resuming strongly into the close. You can buy closes here, here. Up here, yes, you can buy closes, but we're losing momentum. Body's getting smaller, tail's getting uh, bigger near the old high. So I, I probably would not buy those. But in any case, uh, the context over here and over here certainly made higher prices likely. Remember, a trend is made of two parts. It begins with a breakout, a spike, and that is a strong trend. And then it's followed by a channel, and that is a weak, a weak trend. Sometimes the channel is so vertical that it functions essentially like a breakout, and um, you should trade it like a breakout. But in my mind, it's still a channel, and a channel is still a weak trend relative to a breakout. A breakout is the strongest type of trend. So here we have a very, very strong bull spike, okay? a pullback, and then this is the channel phase. Uh, even this channel phase um, has a strong spike in it. The channel is probably evolving into a much broader uh, channel, and at this point, this entire thing is probably a bull channel, and it's likely that we're going to work harder, work higher in broad swings. So, a strong bull trend, um, you want to buy breakouts from pullbacks. So the market's pulling back, you buy above the high of the bar. It's a swing trade, so your stop is down here or down here, so trade small. Uh, another pullback, a high two, you buy above the high of this bar. Swing trade, stop down here. Um, here, another uh, pullback, wedge bull flag, three pushes, one, two, three, bull inside bar. You can buy here, test of the moving average. Second entry, buy here. You can buy any of those. You can buy all of them if you trade small enough and um, make sure that the total dollars at risk is not greater than your comfort level. Your swing stop is down here, maybe below this um, breakout bar. Another pullback, small pullback, uh, you buy here, right? So you buy uh, pullbacks and uh, you buy above swing highs. You press your bets. Uh, here's a, a prior lower high. You place a buy stop one tick above its high and you buy up there. And same here, you buy here. You know, all of those are ways to get in. You don't have to take all of them. You don't even have to take most of them. But in a strong bull trend, you have to take at least one of them. You buy below bars in a strong bull trend. You assume any attempt by the bears to reverse a trend this strong is going to fail. So you can place limit orders at the low of the prior bar and get filled there. Here's a, a bar. You place a limit order at its low. You get filled there. You can buy below prior lows. So the market might break below this low. Well, if it does, buy. Here's another spike down. If it falls below there, buy. So you get filled over here. Another strong attempt by the bears. You have to assume it'll fail. If the market falls below it, buy. Okay? Another bull spike. You place a limit order to buy at the low of the prior bar, and you get filled there. How else can you get long? Um, you can buy closes. You can buy bear closes. You can buy bear breakouts. Uh, every attempt by the bears to reverse the trend will fail. You can buy that close. Here's another bear bar, that close. You can buy this close. You can buy this close. Again, relying on your swing stop. Here's a bear breakout, a strong bear bar closing below the low of the past 10 bars or so. But you have to assume bear breakouts will fail because it's a strong bull trend. And this failed. Instead of having another strong bear bar, it was followed by a bull bar, a failed breakout bar. Remember the trader's equation, there are three variables, and in a strong breakout, the probability is very high. But what's the trade-off? The trade-off is the risk is also greater. So yes, you have much higher probability, but the stop goes way down below the bottom of the spike, so your risk is much greater, and that's your trade-off. So you have to trade smaller. Okay, strong bull spike. You have several possibilities for your stop no matter where you bought in here right you can put the most conservative stop below the bottom of the spike you can put a stop below the entry bar you could put a stop below this breakout bar remember this bar broke out above uh, the high of the prior bar and above the high of the day 
um, you could put a stop below the breakout point. Um, this bar uh, is where the trend accelerated, and it accelerated once it went above the high of the prior bar. So you could put a stop just below that. The further the stop, the greater the probability of success, but also the greater the risk. So if you're using a wide stop, you have to trade very small. And that's okay. That's exactly what you should do. Sometimes there's something going on in a stock that makes you want to be long, but the risk is too great. And options have um, option traders have an alternative to uh, trading a very small size. So let's say you have a very large open profit, and the profit just keeps growing, and now your stop is very, very far away, and the total dollars at risk is much greater than you're accustomed to trading. So you know you have to reduce your position size. Beginners tend to look at their big open profits and say, hey, it's other people's money. No, it's not. It's in your account. It's your money. So you have to adjust your position size based upon your actual risk at the moment. And you can either greatly reduce your position size. If that makes your position size so small that it's not worth continuing to hold the position, you have an alternative. You could simply sell out of your entire position and replace it with an option strategy. And the obvious one, if it's a bull market, is to buy a call or to buy a call spread if you're expecting a move that will go up for 4 or 5 or 10 more percent over the course of the next several weeks. Then go ahead and buy a call spread. If you're expecting a more modest move or if you're expecting a much uh, faster move, a very sharp move up, just go ahead and uh, buy a call. Other strategies like collaring up um, are beyond the scope of my intentions for this course, and I may deal with them in uh, another course in the future. But right now, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about what you do as an alternative to using a stop that's just uh, too far away and, um, and you don't want to trade too small. And buying a call. Sometimes if you either own a stock and the stop is very far away, or if you're thinking about buying a stock and the stop is very far away, you can have an alternative to simply trading very small. And options offer a very good alternative. Let me give you two examples. One is, let's say you bought a stock somewhere down here, the spider on the daily chart, and now it's up here. And let's say your stop is down here, and you've been scaling out so now you're down to maybe 100 shares. But your 100 shares times $5, that might be more than you'd care to risk. That would be $500. You might say, well, I don't want to get down to zero. Uh, I still want to participate. Well, an alternative is to sell out of your spider's um, contract or your spider shares and instead replace your stock position with an options position. And an obvious one would be a call. Um, you just buy an at-the-money uh, call uh, one month out or two months out and so at this point you'd be long a call if you're looking to hold for two or three months maybe for a five or ten percent gain you could go ahead and buy a call spread but if you're thinking the market might just go up another two or three percent over the next few weeks just go ahead and buy the call let's say instead instead of being long all the way down here let's say you're flat for whatever reason and you decide you want to buy up at this area you know your stop goes down here and if that results in a risk that's too big for you don't buy the stock just go ahead and buy the call you might be able to buy an at the money call you know three or four weeks out uh, for two dollars um, in other words times 100 shares it would, your actual cost would be about two hundred dollars um, yes you won't make as much as you would had you bought um, 100 shares of the spider but your risk will be less. If you buy the spider and your stop is down here, you're risking $500 on 100 shares. If you buy a call for $2, your risk is $2. The most you can lose is $2. And yet, you'll still have a good gain if the market goes up here. So, options provide an alternative to stocks whenever the risk is big. In other words, whenever your stop is far away. For those traders who did buy down here, if the market is up here, they can argue, well, I'm trading other people's money, and therefore I don't care if I lose $5. Well, 
That's not true. Once the money's in your account, it's your money. It's not other people's money. It's your money. And you have to trade it as if you just put the trade on right here, not as if you put the trade on down here. You always have to mark your position to the market. So if you're long, it doesn't matter if you bought down here. If, if this is today and you're currently long and your stop is down here, this is your risk. It's not other people's money that's at risk. It's your risk. And you totally, you constantly have to be reassessing your position based upon your current stop, your current position size, and the current price. It's your money. It's always your money if it's in your account. Here's the five minute e mini chart. And let's say for whatever reason, you did not get long earlier and you decide to get long up here. You know that your stop is below the bottom of the bull spike. And you say, well, wow, that's eight points away. I can't risk eight points. And yet, um, I, 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 I only trade one e mini contract, so uh, I can't take the trade. Well, an alternative to, do that, to doing that is um, to use options as an alternative. You could simply go ahead and buy uh, an at-the-money weekly spider call. Or if it's still too expensive, buy a slightly out-of-the-money uh, spider call. Options are a very good alternative to uh, stocks, and especially a big market like the E-mini or the spider. Uh, spider calls have uh, tremendous volume, and tr uh, they're excellent alternatives to, um, to taking outright positions in the spider or the E-mini. Let's give it an, an, alter, an alternate example here. Let's say you happen to buy here, and you're still long here, and your stop is now, um, you know, whatever, seven points away, and you don't want to risk that much, yet you think the market is still going a lot higher. Um, you should be reducing your uh, position size to keep the risk the same, but if, if it's too far away and you can't reduce your position size, instead of continuing to hold your E-mini and using a stop that might be too tight, like maybe below this bar, what you could do is simply sell out of your E-mini position and go ahead and buy um, a spider call, you know, an at-the-money spider call, a weekly call, and that would be a very good alternative. Let's say you bought it and it cost $0.80. Cents. Let's say you bought a weekly call. The most you can lose is $0.80, cents, which times 100 shares is um, $80. So the most you can risk is, uh, the most you can, can lose is $80, and if uh, the market goes up for a measured move based on the height of this spike, uh, you probably will make uh, $80 um, by the end of the day. Anytime, you should always use uh, position sizes that are uh, correct for the size of the stop that you're deciding to use. What happens after the bull makes a new high? You have to be thinking about trailing uh, your stop, tightening up your stop. Uh, whenever you raise your stop from a prior stop, that's called tra trailing your stop. And you usually trail your swing stop to just below the most recent significant high or low. Every time the market makes a new high, put the stop, raise the stop up to below the most recent higher low. If that higher low is too far below, um, you know, maybe trail the stop to below the most recent very strong bull trend bar or some other support level, like uh, a few ticks below a trend line. You can also use a money stop. For example, if you're trading the spider, you can trail a stop 20 ticks below the most recent high. Uh, you can also move your stop to break even and then um, not worry about trailing your stop after that. Uh, just rely that on uh, your break even stop and assume that the trend will just uh, continue. So the market here made a new high. Your original stop was somewhere down here. So what do you do? A new high, you raise your stop to the most recent higher low. Okay, new high up here, raise your stop to the most recent higher low. End of the day, I, I would not allow a stop down there, especially since at this point the market's transitioning into a trading range. But if this were earlier in the day and I was buying this as a bull channel, I would move my stop to below the most recent higher low, because as long as the market's making higher highs and higher lows, it's in a bull trend. And if you're swinging, you're assuming it's in a bull trend. Eventually, a breakout evolves into a channel, and a channel evolves into a trading range. Uh, once it does evolve into a trading range, you trade it like a trading range. You buy low, you sell high, and you scalp. What does sell mean? 
cell can mean sell out of longs, right? So if you're in a bull trend and it's evolving into a trading range and you're near the top of the trading range, you can sell out of your longs, right? You don't have to sell into shorts. Uh, buy low, sell high. Uh, sell high can mean simply sell. Once the market gets high, sell out of your longs and look to um, buy again lower. Should you reverse to short? In general, no. If the market's still always in long and the trend is still reasonably solid, um, I would not um, uh, short or I'd be careful about shorting. You know, any short is a scalp, so your profit is not uh, very big compared to your risk. Also, if you're trying to reverse, it's hard to be objective. For example, if you're long, 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 all you're thinking about is the bull case. It's hard to instantaneously on the very next bar totally change your uh, perspective and make the um, uh, make the bear case. So in general, when I'm trading, if I'm long and um, I'm looking to get short, I get out of my long and wait for two or three bars until I feel like I'm objective again and then look to do shorts. Also, technically, mechanically, it's hard to do two things at once. You know, get long, get short, and make sure that you handle your orders properly. All right, so here we got a strong bull breakout and um, a new high, but on much less momentum. Three pushes up, one, two, three. So maybe a wedge higher high and possibly a major trend reversal. We have a bull trend, a break below the bull trend line. Here's the bull trend line, a break below the moving average, and then a weaker rally to a new high. So technically, this is a higher low major trend reversal. Here's a double top bear flag, right, after the higher high. So it's a small lower high major trend reversal after this higher high major trend reversal. Okay, um, should you be thinking about shorting? If you're long, I would simply get out of longs, right? The market is evolving into a trading range since over here. It's in a tight trading range here. And the bears have a case to be made that it's a reasonable swing short for a uh, major trend reversal. That's enough for me to get out of uh, longs. Should you reverse the short? Uh, and if, if you're long and looking for a possible short, for me it's easier to exit my long and then take two or three bars to evaluate the situation and then look for the shorts. This is what I was talking about. You have a bull spike, a bull trend, a break below the um, bull trend, so a possible higher high major trend reversal. You have a, a smaller bull trend up here, a trend line, small trend line break, and a possible double top lower high major trend reversal. Um, so for the bears, um, so if you got flat somewhere in here, you might think about taking a swing short up here. You can say, well, Al, the probability might only be 40%. That's fine. If the reward is twice the risk, it's a good trade. And you probably will be targeting some kind of test down here. So the reward would be at least twice the risk. So that would be a reasonable short, despite the bull signal bar. If you're eager to get in during a bull breakout, you know, for example, if the five minute chart has a strong breakout and you don't want to enter too far, uh, you don't want to wait to enter on the close of the bar because you're afraid as that bar gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's getting further away from where you have to put your stop. You have an alternative. You can look at the one minute chart. You can buy on the one minute chart. So if the five minute chart has a strong bull spike that continues to grow, you can turn to the one minute chart and, and look to see how it's doing. If you see four or con five consecutive bull trend bars, just buy the close of the bull trend bar and put a stop below the low of that four or five bar bull spike. You can also place a limit order to buy at the low of the prior bar on the one minute chart and again risk to the bottom of that one minute spike. Here's an example. Here's a five minute chart on the left, a one minute chart of the same thing on the right. And you can see a very strong bull spike here, close on the high, big bar closing on its high, right? So if you don't want to wait until the bar closes to buy, as this is forming, you can look at a one minute chart. And if you see this, one, two, three, four bull bars, just buy the close of that bull bar and put a stop below the bottom of the four bar bull spike. Okay, we're still continuing higher. So now we have about a 10 bar bull microchannel, 10 consecutive bars without a pullback. 
probably the first pullback will be bought. So you can start placing limit orders to buy at the low of the prior bar. And you would have been filled right here. Again, stop below the bottom of the spike. The market starts to turn up. You can scalp out if you want based upon your actual risk. Make sure to go for at least one point in all cases. But uh, to me, the five-minute chart is a swing. So, um, you know, I, I would not be scalping out for one point. I would try to get more than that. Setups, they never look good enough when the market's in a trend. Um, in a strong bull trend, the market spends most of its time near the top. It doesn't pull back very much. But beginners want pullbacks. You've got a strong bull trend. They'd like to see a small pullback, and they enter here and then put a stop right below the pullback because they want to have uh, a smaller stop and a uh, smaller risk. But the pullbacks don't come until the experts start to take profits, and the beginners end up missing the entire trend. Experts buy for any reason. They know that most reversal attempts will fail when you have a strong bull trend. And they also know that the trend may go a long way before there's any kind of a pullback. So they, they just keep buying all the way up. So they capture a lot of the bull spike. Uh, you know, they also buy small pullbacks, a high one pullback, a high two pullback, small bull flags. Uh, the market may make two or three high one pullbacks before it weakens enough and forms a high two pullback. So they just buy those high ones. Uh, confident that even if the market becomes um, um, more complex and, and has a bigger pullback, they can scale in lower and get out around their original entry price, break even on their first entry, and with profits on. When the market's in a strong bull trend in the breakout phase, at some point it starts to have pullbacks and transitions into a channel. The first pullback is usually a high one buy. And sometimes the high one buy setup does not look all that strong. And traders have to decide, is the bull trend forming um, an exhaustive, exhaust, exhaustive buy climax and about ready to reverse? Or will the market probably continue higher? And that creates a problem for someone deciding whether to buy the um, high one. In general, if you look at a high one and a strong bull trend and you're not sure whether or not it's the end of the trend or it'll be profitable. I think it's worth taking the trade, but once the trade starts to go your way, set the profit target at two times the actual risk. If the high one is very clear and very strong, uh, you can scalp power out at one times actual risk, but if it's all that clear, uh, the market probably will be good for a swing up, and you probably should let at least part of it ride. Here's an example of an exceptionally strong bull trend. Gap up, very strong bull spike, and then there's a, an attempt to reverse a strong bear bar, but it, uh, the reversal never triggered. Instead, we got a small bull inside bar. So, And also, these bars are closing right at their high, so there's a lot of urgency on the part of the bulls. They're very eager to buy. So when I look at this, I think, yeah, that's a, that's a very high probability, um, high one buy setup and we'll probably get a measured move based on the height of this spike. So um, my initial risk is one tick below, assuming I'm scalping, my initial risk is one tick below the signal bar. My entry price is one tick above. Um, if, I, if I'm going for a scalp, should I really be going for uh, a profit target at one times my risk, or should I be going for more? When the trend is this strong, I think it's better to go for more. Here's a setup that is not as clear. We have a strong bull breakout here, and then two bars with tails and small bodies, some loss of momentum, and then another surge, another big bull trend bar closing near its high. So might be an exhaustive buy climax in the end of the trend. And then we have a bear bar with a tail, big tail, small body, another smaller bear bar with uh, small tails. The market might be entering a tight trading range, and if it's a tight trading range, it probably will have failed breakouts above and below as it did over here at the top. So traders have to decide how to handle this. In general, what I do is I buy um, a, part, uh, a, bar, a part, sometimes a full position, more often a smaller position at one tick above the high of the bar. If I'm going for a scalp, I don't want to allow pullback, so technically I'd put my stop below either this small bar or that small bar. More often than not, I put my stop, I use a swing stop, 
below the most recent very strong bull trend bar or below the most recent higher low, even though this is not really a higher low. It's the bottom of um, the spike. So for me, I probably would put my initial stop here and then plan to adjust it if the market goes up. If instead it pulls back, I probably will add on, double the size of my position, and then try to get out of everything <coughs> around break even around my initial entry price. Instead, we got a parabolic curve up and another uh, bull breakout, uh, another big bull bar, smaller than this spike and smaller than this spike. And this one has a bigger tail on the top relative to the size of the body and another bear bar. So traders have to decide again, are we getting near the end of this move? Is there going to be a good swing up or are we going to get a substantial pullback, maybe two legs um, down to the moving average? This is the third push up on the day and it's the third consecutive uh, buy climax and each climax is getting smaller. You know, we had this very large bar here followed by another good bar. Here we had a big bar but smaller and follow through is weaker. And here we had a smaller big bar and again follow through is weaker. And again, to me, I would look for the bottom of the spike uh, for the protective swing stop. Maybe the low of this bar, probably more the low of this bar. This close is above that high. This, we had trading range behavior here, small bars with tails, and then we had a breakout, a close above the high. The low of this bar is above the high of that bar, so we have a micro gap in here. So for me, the swing stop, a reasonable swing stop, would be below the low of this bar, and that would be my initial stop. When you look, when you look at the distance, that determines your position size. You can either take a full position. More often than not, um, I take a, a smaller position, and if the market goes sideways and pulls back a little bit, I'll put the rest of the position on. And when that happens, I try to get out of everything at break even. If instead it goes directly up, I'll be uh, taking profits. Here, this is the third push up. The, the bull is getting weaker. I would be much more inclined to uh, scalp here at either one or two times the initial risk. Uh, or actually, it would be the actual risk because, well, it could be the initial risk. I'm assuming the market went below the bear bar and then above the bear bar. But you don't know. It may have gone above, then below, and then above again. Um, so to me, the actual risk was one tick below. Um, actually, that might be a micro double bottom. They may be at the same price. I really can't tell. But anyway, uh, the initial risk and actual, the actual risk is certainly below the low of this bar. Initial risk is down here. And once you had the close of this bar, you can feel pretty confident that your initial risk is here. So you buy here, your initial risk is one tick below, and with the market as strong as it is, it might be worth trying for two times the initial risk. To me, I could see even going one time the initial risk. Uh, the probability is high that the market would go up at least some. Uh, I don't know that it's high that, it would, that we would have another big swing up at the moment. <coughs> Okay, here we have another very strong bull breakout, but there's something very different with this breakout compared to the, the one on the prior chart. Again, very strong, a very a big series of bull bars, very big bodies. Okay, what's different here is look to the left. You always have to look to the left, right? and here we have a double top, and this, and we raced up here with big bars testing that double top. So to me, it's possible that this is simply a buy vacuum test of resistance and that the market will evolve into a big trading range. Look at the signal bar, a doji bar, so a less reliable signal bar. It increases the chances of sideways, which the market uh, did. And that big tail at resistance increases the chances of uh, sideways. But let's say, in general, I probably would not buy a high one right below resistance, but I think it's okay to buy this. However, if I did buy it, my initial stop would be down here, and I would have to trade a position size that's appropriate for that. And also, since I probably would be willing to scale in, um, I probably would take half of the appropriate size. So let's say you normally trade uh, 400 spider contracts, all right? And you normally risk 20 ticks. Here you have to risk 40 ticks, so you might buy 200 contracts, 200 shares of the spider. But since you want to scale in lower, you may just buy 100 shares. Right, so your initial would be 100 shares, one quarter of your usual size position, and you'd see that the market hit your stop. You'd get stopped and you'd be long on this bar, but then it broke uh, sharply down here. For me, I would usually look to scale in below, put the other uh, 100 shares on in this example, uh, either at the low of this bar 
or on a high two. Here's a high two buy. Uh, in either case, I would keep my stop down here, which is probably risking more than I should. I might move my stop to below here um, once I put the second half on. However, what's different now is we have a strong bear bar. We have two more bear bars uh, and a tail. Uh, to me, I would probably try to get out around my original entry price if the market got there. All right. So if I bought here above the signal bar, and let's say I bought more above this bar, right, I would be holding along. I'd see this, and I'd see this two-bar reversal, and I would be nervous. However, I still think the market's always in long. It looks like this bull bar double bottomed with this bar, but it triggered the two-bar reversal. However, tight trading range, I don't want to be shorting at the bottom of a tight trading range in a bull trend. So I would not have shorted, and I would not have gotten out. However, when the market resumed up, we have a big tail, right? And then we have a small bar with a tail, right? This is not going up. And I bought here, and I added on maybe here or maybe, uh, you know, 20 cents below. I often add on at a fixed number of uh, ticks below. Um, and, you know, the market's trying one, two, three. You know, it keeps trying to get up there, but it's not fully getting up to this price. It looks like it got to the close, but not above the close. So if I place my uh, limit order to get out at that close, uh, I would not have been filled. If I placed it at my entry price, one tick above this bar, um, I would not have been filled. In general, when that happens and it's making repeated attempts, I just look at the average entry price from my position and then try to get out break even or maybe a tick or two better than break even. So somewhere here when it uh, turned into a tight trading range, um, I would say, you know, I've, I've given it enough time and it's not giving me a profit. Something's not right uh, and we're right at resistance. So for me, somewhere in here, I would get out of the entire position at uh, break even. Um, for me, I actually would not have bought here. I, I probably would have bought here, but I would not have bought there. And had I bought here, I probably would have gotten out around break even somewhere up in here. After several pushes up, one, two, three, you know, I would just give up too much risk of a small double top and then a bigger sell off, which is what ultimately happened. So it's a high one. You can buy it, but if you buy it, I think management is key and I would buy small with the intention of adding lower. Had you bought here and you got this kind of behavior, tight trading range right below resistance, uh, I would get out at break even. Here's another possibility of um, a high one buy. You know, technically this is the high one. I think you could buy above the high of this bar. Uh, you could argue that this is a small high two, but it's you know, the same entry price as the high one. But let's say you bought above the high two. Okay, your initial stop would be theoretically below the most recent higher low down here. Realistically, we have a new breakout here, right? This close is above that high, so it's a breakout. Um, so to me, I would prob probably put my initial stop here. So if my initial stop is for my entry price up here and to the risk down here, I'm risking about 40 cents. If my normal risk is 20, I would trade no more than a half size, maybe a quarter size position. So let's say I, I bought here or I bought here. Um, you know, I'd be trading small. Right here, I think it's a 50-50 trade. I would want to go for a reward twice my actual risk. Uh, the market tried to turn up here, did not turn up yet. Did turn up here with a decent bull bar. So at this point, you can determine the actual risk. It's one tick below the lowest point um, from entry. So you entered here. Let's say you entered here. Your actual risk is then one tick below that bar. And uh, two times actual risk would be up here. A second entry, double bottom, probably higher probability. And um, I personally would convert uh, part of it to a scalp equal to one times risk. Whenever a trade is uh, questionable in terms of much follow through, but the probability is high, you know, a high two and a bull trend, a lot of times I'll scalp just for one times risk instead of two times risk. So had I bought here, it'd be a high one. Um, I'd probably initially go for a two times risk. But then once it formed a double bottom, the probability, I think, goes up. A high two is more likely than a high one to be profitable. So at this point, your, your trade is uh, more likely to be profitable. Your actual risk you now know is here. So you could go for one times risk. If you were still going for two times risk, for me, I would exit below this bear bar, you know, maybe with a small profit, a few ticks profit. So that is a um, strong bull trend. Not quite as strong as the other two, but unlike the prior trade, it broke out above the bars to the left. So this is not the top of a trading range. This is a breakout and a bull trend.
second or third entries. All right, huge gap up, strong bull spike, trend from the open bull, small pullback bull trend day, extremely strong. Here's a high one, you buy. High one, this II, you buy. Um, and goes above the high of a bear bar. Um, this bear bar is a small pullback attempt. You can argue it's a double bottom, one push down here, second push down here, you buy. You buy for any reason, um, especially looking for high one and high two pullbacks. Uh, two little pullbacks here, one and two. Um, you can call it a high one, you can call it a high two. This double bottom, you can call it a high two. You could say it's a pullback from a new high, you can call it a high one. It doesn't matter. you, you got to be buying small pullbacks when the market is this strong. You know, in trends, setups never look good enough. And beginners are always waiting for the perfect setup, and it never comes, and they end up missing the entire trend. You know, traders always want to buy lower so they can have a smaller risk. Here's that same series of charts. And a beginner will look at this and say, uh-oh, we're topping out. we got an II final flag, and we're probably going to pull back all the way to the moving average. I don't want to buy up here. I'll wait to buy at the moving average. Instead, experienced traders are saying, wow, a huge gap up, uh, six or seven bars up. I need to buy. I'm going to buy the market, or I'll buy the low of the prior bar, or I'll buy above the high of this high one. You can call it a high one. You can call it a high two. doesn't matter. Uh, but the expert, experienced traders are going to get long. Okay? doesn't look like much, right? But the context is great. You have a gap up and a strong bull spike. Uh, this could be a huge, uh, strong bull trend day. So this is certainly an excellent um, swing long. Uh, where's your stop? Probably down here at the bottom of the spike. Maybe below somewhere down in here, you know, two-thirds of the way down. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you have to be trading small, uh, confident that the market is going to go higher. All right, now we've got another bull spike. Um, the traders who bought here are feeling pretty good. The beginners who did not buy here are saying, oh, darn, I missed it. Uh, I'll wait for another pullback. Uh, the bulls, the experienced traders are looking at that and saying, that is a pullback. You know, a strong bull spike, small pullback trend day, the strongest type of trend day. I'll just buy and put my stop below the most recent higher low. Bear reversal bar. Beginners are saying, yes, we got three pushes up on the day. First bar of the day, over here, over here. We're finally topping out. I'll finally get my pullback. Uh, in fact, um, what I'll do is I'll be clever. Uh, I'll buy my pullback, but right now I'll take this short, three pushes up. So I'll, I'll take the short, and then I'll buy the pullback when it forms, and I'll make two profitable trades. Experienced traders are saying, huh, the biggest pullback was just a few ticks here, uh, just uh, you know, a couple points here. These pullbacks have been small. This pullback probably will not be big enough to make a profit on a short, so I'm only going to look to buy. Uh, we got two bars down, one, two. This may even be a micro double bottom, and if it is, you can even buy above the high of this bear bar. All right, beginners, they took this short. Where's their stop? Above the high of this bar. So what happens if the market gets above the high of this bar? It's probably going higher. So experienced traders will buy that. And beginners are saying, darn, I thought for sure I would be able to take my short, make a profit on my scalp, and then reverse to long. You know, experts have a hard time reversing to long. So for a beginner to think that he's going to take the short and then reverse the long is way too much to expect. He should only be looking to buy and give up taking the counter trend scalp. All right. Beginners are saying, okay, we're starting to get two-sided. We have a bull spike here, another spike here, another spike here, consecutive buy climaxes. The market has to pull back. Um, I'm not going to take this buy. I'll wait until we come back, maybe to here, maybe to here. Experience of traders, experienced traders, small pullback bull trend day, strongest kind of bull trend day. Even if we do pull back, we'll come back up here at some point in the next 10 or 15 bars. I'm only going to buy. Maybe I'll put my stop below the most recent um, spike. Beginners, okay, second entry short, a two-bar reversal. We're certainly getting back to the moving average this time. This time I'm going to short, and I'll reverse at the moving average. Experienced traders, the biggest pullback has only been a couple of points. This probably will only be a couple of points. There's no way I'm going to short. I'm either going to buy above here, a double bottom, so a high two, or I'll buy any other pullback, but there's no way that I'm going to short. 
and uh, the experienced traders made more money. Beginners, three pushes up, one, two, three, uh, small micro wedge here, uh, way overdone bull. It's certainly going to pull back to the moving average. I'm going to short again, and I'll reverse to long at the moving average. Experienced traders, small pullback, bull trend day. I'm going to buy for any reason. I'll buy at the below bars. I'll buy above bars. I'll buy at the market. I'll buy pullbacks. And I'll rely on a swing stop at this point, probably below this spike. All right. That is the end of my module on trading a strong bull breakout.